Hello there. On today's episode of Escape the Shed, I'm continuing the occasional series about lost railways and lost railway stations. Today we're back on the Dolly branch of the Midland Railway and we're at a station that closed in 1930. Behind me here is something else that closed and had a very interesting use both before and during World War II. This is Rowthorn Tunnel. Find out more about it in just a moment. It may look like rolling countryside now, but beneath these hills, there's a railway. It's the Midland Railway, Dole Branch, coming from the old Blackwell station to here, the site of a station known as Rowthorn and Hardwick. You may remember that in previous episodes we've been on the Dole branch before at Bolsover Castle station and uh, we worked our way along to um, the next station along, um, which was Polterton and Sutton. But this station here closed a lot before they did. This one opened in 1890 and closed in 1930. It's the other side of Glatwall. So it goes Bolsover Castle, um, Polterton and Sutton, Glatwall, and then it goes through a big tunnel, which is under the fields behind me there, which is Rowthorn Tunnel. And you then get to this place, which is the site of the Rowthorn and Hardwick station. Now, there's not much left of it, but there are some things left. So let's take a look. And the first thing we need to look at here is a car park. This is the Rowthorn Trail. Phoenix Greenways and this is a now a public car park but it is at the site of what used to be the old Rowthorn station. This road was actually over the end of a tunnel and here in the trees was a tunnel mouth where the railway track came out and then there was a platform, a single platform, because it was a single line at this point, which was Rothorn and Hardwick Station. So, let's go into the car park and see what we can find. Because, although this station closed completely as far back in as 1930, having only had 40 years of use, there are a few bits and pieces that we might be able to find here. So as I'm walking into the car park now, on my right and over there, is uh, where the tunnel mouth was. It's been filled in, so you have to use your imagination a bit. So the tunnel mouth was somewhere in amongst these trees. And the train heading towards Plesley from Bolsover would be going this way. Now if you're parking a vehicle here, you have to be careful because to park up to, the council have put in some big slabs of stone to stop you going too far and when you look at these slabs of stone close up you see they're all nicely cut and nicely dressed if you look at the corners on this one look how they've been cut 
and that's because they are bits of the old station. I'm not sure if they were parts of the station platform, station building, or if they're actually parts of the old tunnel mouth. You know, the brick and stonework for the tunnel mouth. But they are certainly something to do with the old station. And there's quite a few of them in the undergrowth here. One, two, three. And over the other side of the barrier, there's some more. And this one here has a very interesting piece of cast iron still bolted to it. I wonder what that used to be. So, I'm making my way out of the car park now. And as you head out of the car park, you ought to try and bear right, if you can. There's a fork in the footpath, I've just taken the right fork here. Because this is taking me towards the track bed. As I'm, as I'm walking, it's on my right hand side, on the, on the left of the picture as you look at it. Um, is where um, things used to be, where the station that used to be. I'm not sure quite how long the entrance to the tunnel was, you know, uh, the groundworks for that, so I'm not sure exactly where the station was, but it was probably somewhere around this point here. So the tunnel mouth would have been up there somewhere, and trains would have come through here. And we can either take that path up there or this path down here. So we'll take this one because I think this is going to take us more onto the old track bed. Now, there's a few things to tell you about Rothorn and Hardwick. It opened with the Dolee branch in 1890. Um, when the other stations on the line opened, things like Bolsover Castle and uh, and all those other stations on that branch. Now the Dolly branch ran between um, uh, Barrow Hill and Plesley, the colliery at Plesley, and it was operated by the Midland Railway. And most of the branch survived up into the 50s or 60s and some bits even into the 70s but this part was closed mainly because of the tunnel behind me because as well as having to be maintained it was a tunnel and it was quite a long tunnel it was also very steep and difficult for trains to get through it now passenger traffic ceased in 1930 and Although there were collieries nearby, they all had other ways of getting their coal out rather than going on this line. Glatwell Colliery, which is just to the north of this station, um, all their coal went out northwards. Um, so didn't touch this section of the line. So Glatwell didn't need the line. And there were also other ways of getting the coal out from Plesley. So in 1930, when the passenger traffic uh, ceased, they decided to take the opportunity to close this bit of line, which was only single track, but they decided to close it in its entirety, which makes it quite difficult to find now, because obviously there's 90 years of undergrowth that's come up on that, so there's not really much that's not given way to nature but we will do our best to find some things and um, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled I think on this section eventually this will take us to Plesley West uh, railway station which is another one that's entirely lost so let's have a walk down the track bed and see what we can see on this beautiful summer's day
Okay, so I've just left the car park now, which is back there behind me. And I was originally going down a track down there uh, somewhere. So I'd bared, bared sort of right at the car park. And it turns out that wasn't quite where I should have gone. I should have gone right to start with to look at the old station, but then bear left a bit because that was getting overgrown and as you can see here is what could almost still be a railway to this day so this is looking more like the old track bed because it's nice and flat and and level it doesn't undulate with the countryside because it, it's quite undulating around here but this doesn't undulate so this must be the old track bed and it's surprisingly well preserved Somewhere down there in the trees is where I'd originally gone in error. But of course where I needed to be really is up on here. Because this is obviously the old track bed. Amazing to think this closed in 1930 and never really got seems to have got totally overgrown. It's still quite good you could almost lay rails back down here tomorrow so we're now leaving Rothorn and Hardwick behind us um, as I say it opened in 1890 closed in 1930 and after the railway closed the tunnel was put to ingenious use First of all, for growing mushrooms in. But by the time World War II rolled around, it was put to even more ingenious use as a store for uh, munitions for the war effort. Um, we don't quite know what happened to it after that, other than we know it's now filled in. Um, so between World War II and now... I don't know what happened. Did they fill it in immediately after the war or did it have another use? If you know, please get in touch with us via the website and let us know. Remember the website, andyshed.callpress.net. Now this is certainly not the old original track bed surface, but as I've been walking along and looked down at it, I've found this piece of pottery of some description now what do you think that could be any ideas it might not be anything railway related at all this but then again, it might be. Could it be some sort of ceramic insulator or something from maybe the telephone, telegraph poles that would probably have originally been alongside the track? Who knows? If you've got any ideas what this is, um, get in touch with us. So this is where we've come from. And this is where we're going to. But the interesting thing is, it seems to go downhill quite a lot just there. Now where I'm standing at the minute, there's an entrance to a field here, which is obviously downhill. But on the other side, we're like in a cutting. So my guess is the railway track goes through there, but we've got to go alongside it down here. That's what I'm guessing, but I don't know for sure. So I am definitely going down a bit of a dip just here. But on the side of me there, that bit of land is staying fairly level. So have I just come to one side of the old track bed here? It's possible. Of course, it's so long since this was abandoned that all kinds of groundworks can have taken place when a lot of the coal mines and things in this part of the world closed 
in the uh, 1980s. They used to do a phenomenal amount of groundwork um, to sort of tidy things up, if you like. And if that had happened here, then um, there must have been a lot happening. But just here now, I've come to a place where there's a kind of fork in the path again, and I can stand here and I'm like between two bits of an embankment. If I go a little bit further forward, you can see there's an embankment on that side and also on that side. So just on this little dip here, did the railway track run along the top of this? Remember, it was only a single track. So it may have run on the top of here and of course, since 1930, it's got overgrown by trees. But I'll just show you what I'm looking at now. So you can see how that could easily have been cut through the old embankment as an access to that field there. And I'm immediately going up again now, onto the top of that embankment, and it looks like this was an embankment for the railway to run on the top of. because there's a bit of a drop down there to the field at that side but there's quite a big one down there if you can see it to the field at that side now I'm walking along on top of this Embankment. Well, there's some big trees here, but I guess these trees can be 90 years old, so they can be quite big. That have grown up on what used to be this track bed. Strange how that other section was so well maintained, and this is little more than a narrow footpath now. I guess it's because maybe farm vehicles use that other bit to get into some of the fields around here. But it's very scenic. It's still quite a reasonable path. Although obviously it really is just a footpath at this point. There's no, uh, no vehicle access down this section. So we'll keep going and see where we end up but I'm pretty sure I'm exactly on the track bed now because there is a drop at either side of me and this looks like this would just have nicely accommodated a single line track it's places like this that I come to where I always get the urge to relay some kind of miniature railway like a 15 inch gauge or or a seven and a quarter inch gauge or something like that because I think, well, wouldn't it be nice to put a little railway back and have it chugging along here? It'd be a beautiful scenic ride. I know some places they have done that um, on old railway track beds. A good example being uh, the Wells Walsingham Light Railway which is a beautiful ride if ever you get to be in the east of England go and take a look at that. But. Uh, as yet, nothing's been done here. And I'm finding very little of the old railway left as well, but that's not really surprising, is it, given the amount of time that it's been abandoned and dismantled for. But I'll keep my eyes peeled 
and I'll let you know. But as far as I know, there's no more stations or anything until we get to Plesley. And then it gets quite interesting. But I think we come to a junction before that, um, which is where this video will probably end. And then we'll do another one about Plesley, because Plesley Pit and the stations there are quite complicated and it's a quite a long and involved story to tell. I've now found a little pond alongside the old track bed here. Now I wonder if this is a recent addition. I would guess that it is. And that uh, maybe originally there was a drainage culvert that went under the old line here and out into that field down there and then down to the bottom of that hill. But of course the culverts all probably got blocked up over the years and a pond's formed here and maybe had a bit of human help to dig it out a bit deeper to make a feature of it when this was turned into a footpath because there are quite a lot of features that have been put in like these benches that you find every so far and they're a really welcome place to take a break on a hot day like this but this is a very scenic footpath beautiful old railway track if you're interested in searching out old railway tracks and nice countryside walks this is definitely one to do from Rowthorn station towards Plesley keep coming to places like this where there seems to be a break in the embankment and there's been a way to get from one field to another put in and I'm wondering when this railway was running if you used to be able to get from one field to another whether the embankment went straight across and just cut them off or whether there was maybe a little bridge or something so I'm just wondering about looking for a bit of evidence there You can see the field on my left goes up. It's quite steep actually, going up there. But if I keep the camera on a level and go to the right, you can see how that one dips down. So we're kind of on a ledge here. And behind me, that is quite steep up onto the top of the embankment there. And in front of me, it's quite steep up onto the top of the embankment again. So this has obviously been either cut away or there's been a bridge taken out here. So maybe there was a bridge in here somewhere. Do you think? Possibly a little bridge, just enough to let a farmer get through from one field to another. And what's making me wonder about it is in the ground here are lots of bricks. And some of these bricks are blue engineering bricks. Now remember, just back up the line towards Bolsover, there was Byron Brickworks. So I'm wondering if any of these are Byron Bricks. And here, again, a very nice piece of dressed stone in the ground. But look, and all the bricks just in this section here. So I wonder if there was once a bridge here. I found two or three of those little places where you dip down and go back up again now onto the old track bed. So I wonder if there were little bridges in. Um, because as soon as you get away from those places and you're back up on the top here there's no bricks in the path anymore it's just small bits of stone which actually look like they could be ancient railway ballast I 
As I walk along here under the trees, I look down to the left and there's a row of fence posts. Some of them are wooden, but look close at some of them, like that one for instance, and that's a concrete one of a type that we know used to be used on the railways and it's just at the bottom of this embankment so is that the original railway boundary where that old fence post is there's another post just up there in the middle of the screen now but I'm not sure if that one is a concrete one or not and there's no way of getting down there to have a look through all these brambles and things. But that one with the round top is certainly an old concrete post. If you go back and have a look at our Poulton and Sutton videos, I think I found one on there as well, which of course is further north back along this line. Nice to see there are some artefacts that have survived 90 years. I keep seeing bits of wood like this in the path in front of me and I've been thinking until now that they're tree roots but I've got to a little section here where there's quite a lot of them. Can you see them sort of going up there? Sorry that's made the camera go out of focus, that's better. And there's quite a lot. now. They look a bit like tree roots, but then look at this one. And could that be a very rotted railway sleeper? And they seem to be spaced incredibly evenly just on this section. I'm just going to walk down this bit and sort of show you what I mean. So there's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve that I can see easily. So, what do you think? Old railway sleepers? That could be the edge of the sleepers just there because. Down here, now, I'm really up quite high. That's quite a big drop down there. And also to the other side, that was originally a hill upwards, there's a drop down on that side now as well. But could they be sleepers? Pre-1930, still in situ. If they are, that means this track probably hasn't been resurfaced and this is railway ballast, all these little bits of stone. And there's another run of sleepers just here. They must be sleepers. You can see the remains of one there, and there, and there. I mean, they're very rotted out, but looks like it could be a railway sleeper to me. Just to give you an idea of the size of it, I'll put my foot against it. My size 10 boot in there. But bear in mind, it's rotted away, just the the hardest bit of the sleeper left, so it could have been bigger than that originally. It's very interesting. Never in my wildest imagination did I think we'd find any sleepers, and certainly not wooden ones. So that's really, really interesting that they are still in situ. Of course, the big hope is of finding a bit of rail, but don't think that's going to happen somehow, do you? 
hollow, you never know. It's a long way down into the bottom of there. But I'm still up on the flat. Still walking on what appears to be railway ballast. The ballast itself on this uh, track bed seems to be quite interesting because it's full of tiny holes. If you take a close look at it, it's very strange. It looks like slag from a furnace. So, did they used to use furnace slag to ballast uh, railway tracks? There'd have been quite a bit of it about here and they'd have needed a use for it. And I guess it's hard. Probably works quite well as railway ballast. There's the remains of what appears to be another sleeper right across the path here. You see how easily you could possibly mistake that for a tree root. Except for the fact it's fairly straight and look at the actual tree root alongside it that isn't. These definitely look like sleepers to me. In fact, is that one edge of the sleeper? And here's the other edge of it and the middle's all rotted out. Again, I'll put my foot alongside so you can get an idea of the size. And again, all these bubbly stones that are like aero chocolate that I think are slag from a furnace that have been used as ballast all the way along here. And just for the record, I'm now very high up. I don't know how far it is from uh, Rothorn and Hardwick Station to uh, Plesley Colliery, but I seem to have been going ages and ages and ages, although I've not been walking very fast and I have been stopping to make little bits of video, but it still feels like it's quite a long way. It's a nice walk though. Just walking down here, still on top of the embankment on the old track bed, there is something interesting. Can you spot it? Now can you spot it? That's right, sticking up out of the ground, obviously used at some time as a bit of fence post, is a piece of old railway track. And it's quite old, it's not welded track, it's got a holes through where you put two bolts through to join it. And it's old, bull head rail I believe you would call that. Modern rail, of course, is flat bottomed. Although that looks quite flat, it's actually called bullhead, I think. That anyone who's a track expert might be able to tell me more. But that's the only bit I've found in the whole of this journey along this track, and it's protecting you from a a long drop down there, but I can't see any more. And actually, I missed this piece at first, but there it is, plain to see on the old Rothorn Trail. 
Now, assuming that bit of rail came off this track, this track was abandoned in 1930. So is that a bit of an original track or has it got put here from somewhere else? I'd venture to suggest that's probably original. Why would you cart a bit from somewhere else all the way up here? You'd just put a wooden fence post in, wouldn't you? I'm finally coming to the end of this uh, section of the Rowthorn Trail now. And here it gets quite interesting because the track just seems to run out and there's a bit of a why that I can take it, I can either go down there, which is very downhill, very, very steeply down, down onto another track down there, or I can go down this way, which is also quite steeply down, although it's high in the back there. So, I'm guessing there must have been some kind of junction or bridge or something happened here and I'm not quite sure what. So, I think we'll go and investigate down here. There seems to be a track running across the bottom of here. So we'll go and see what that is, shall we? Okay. So we'll go through here. Looks like they've done some work recently over here. There's a new fence on the side of me here. So I'm going down quite steeply now, as you can probably see there. And then here, aha, here we are. And if you look down there, there's a road and the remnants of a bridge. And up there behind me is the Tavisol Trail. That went over that bridge. So let's go down there and have a little look. So, I'm just going down the slope now from what appears to be the end of the Rothorn Trail to have a look at this bridge and see what happens. And it looks like it was a double bridge from what I'm now seeing in front of me. So, let me turn you around so you can have a look. So there's the old bridge that carries what is now the Tevisal Trail and it has had a new bridge deck put in place to make it a footpath but if we look just over here there's another old bridge that hasn't been replaced and I'm guessing that's where the line that we've just walked on from Rothorn Station started to curve round to the left and then go over this bridge We've just come down through the trees up here somewhere. It must have curved down to the left of the line and gone over there. And then just somewhere up there, the two lines looked like they came together. Or at least. So let's get back up onto the Tevelsall Trail now and see if we can figure this out. So here we go, up the steep path. And up a bit more. And through a little gateway. And this is now the Tevisol Trail. So if I now walk this way, I'm going to be on top of that bridge where they've put the new bit of bridge in. So 
So here we are, on the bridge. And you can see down there the remaining abutments of the other bridge. And here is the Teversal Trail. Uh, there's a big wide area just there, which I'm kind of assuming is where the two tracks must have met. And then somewhere down there should be Plesley Station. Or at least one of them. I'm up on the abutments of the old abandoned bridge now. That would have been the end of the line that we just walked on where it joins up with the line that goes between um, Plesley Colliery and Teversal and that line is just there through the trees which is a, a very well maintained cycle path now um, known as the Teversal Trail so this is the bit they haven't restored as a trackway and that's the bit they have restored for walkers and cyclists but here, in amongst the old abutment, there's all kinds of old stonework, just abandoned. And out through there is where the track would have gone into what is now a big meadow. And this was all Midland Railway. There was another line almost parallel to this and not a great distance away at this point um, somewhere over there that was Great Northern and that's why Plesley ended up with two stations Plesley East and Plesley West this line went into I believe Plesley West which is actually, when you look at it on a map, kind of in the north of Plesley. And the Great Northern Line went into Plesley East, which when you look at it on a map is actually more in the south of Plesley. They should be called North and South, really, not East and West. It's very confusing. But I believe this one was called Plesley West, which is somewhere down the track, just down here. If I come out of this lot, you'll see where I am. Make my way out of the undergrowth. And down there is Teversal. But up here, if I spin around, that should be Plesley West. Shall we go and have a look for it? Well, I think we'll leave that till another video. I hope you've enjoyed this trip along the Rothorn Trail and finding the old station and more bits of old railway. I'm particularly interested to, to I'm particularly interested, I should have said, to have found those old sleepers um, that must be at least 90 years old now. If you know of any old railway tracks you'd like me to have a look at then get in touch with us. Go to the website andished.corepress.net and uh, fill in one of the contact us forms. And if you fancy coming out on one of these walks with me and showing me an old railway near you, then also get in touch. But for me, for now, remember, give us a like and give us a subscribe, whether you're watching on YouTube or now also watching on Library. 
So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.